Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining our, our now weekly series on COVID-19. Uh, today is our update for April 8th. Again, thanks you, thank you guys all for, uh, for joining us today. We have been doing weekly webinars uh, just sort of outlining what we are seeing and the impacts of COVID-19 around the world and uh, have been bringing those to you on a regular basis. And, and today we wanted to change the format up just a little bit. And so what we're going to be doing is giving an overview of any updates that have come between uh, sort of last week and now, but did want to allow a bit more time today for questions and answers. So we do have an update for, for all of you. We have, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to be joined by Dr. Arwen Decker, our Chief Medical Officer for our North America market, who's gonna, gonna provide you with, again, a bit of an update on what we are seeing as of this week, and then a couple of impacts and, and things to, to look out for as, as uh, employers that you can do for your employees and then really wanted to open it up and allow everyone on the line to be able to ask any questions that they may have. So hopefully we'll have about a half an hour or so for questions at the end. So if you have questions, we will be ready to take them. You can always type in a question in our chat feature and we can answer them as we are going along. Otherwise, uh, at the end again, we'll open it up. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Arwen Decker now to give a, a quick update on what we are seeing from a medical point of view. Dr. Aaron Decker, all yours. Thanks, Ben. Um, so from a medical standpoint, we're gonna start with the basic numbers again, as we all have seen the cases throughout the country and the world have been spiking as more and more cases are being reported in the United States. Um, similarly, the total number of people who have recovered has been going up very steadily, um, and a few more of the last remaining countries who have not previously reported cases are now starting to report cases um, of COVID. The good news in today's uh, scenario really is that what we're seeing is the efforts of social distancing are reaping benefits and are being successful. Um, a lot of the estimates which were previously suggesting that we may see over uh, a quarter of a million deaths in the United States are now becoming uh, more conservative, saying, well, we may not get that. And the curves uh, in a lot of jurisdictions are showing significant signs of flattening, which are all very, very positive, and it is what we've all been working towards over the last uh, month or so. So the brief uh, part of the uh, on COVID, just remember, 80% of people who are infected will have very mild symptoms, similar to a cold or no symptoms at all. Fevers, coughs, body aches, the one to 3% mortality is likely overestimated. And those people who are over the age of 65 are those who are at the highest risk. Um, I'm gonna just skip over this one because I think everyone is aware of that this is spread uh, via droplets, which are coughed and sneezed by individuals uh, and other people who walk through that cloud uh, or touch where that cloud lands can then become infected afterwards. And the spectrum of disease is very broad. The treatments, um, I, I wanna touch uh, briefly here on the treatments for this. Uh, by and large, for the vast majority of cases, meaning over 90, 95% of cases, the treatment is entirely supportive, which is to say, we make sure the person stays hydrated. What is more important in most of cases of COVID is breathing support. So if they need supplemental oxygen, which occurs in less than 15% of cases, we can, we'll supply them supplemental oxygen. Um, there's been a lot of press of late of regarding several treatments which um, are out in the uh, medical sphere. Uh, I'm gonna say this, all of those treatments, whether they are azithromycin, hydroxychloroquine, various vaccines which may be effective or experimental, or experimental drugs under development are all experimental. Um, even though we've had over a million cases, what we've found is that almost all of those people recover on their own with just a little bit of help in those most severe cases. Um, we're still trying to find what will work best for them. The CDC and all of the medical uh, experts 
are not recommending any specific treatment, and we are encouraging people not to um, try to take care of this themselves by anything that they may have heard of online. Uh, every week, typically, you're seeing a new uh, journal article in the medical press or an article in the lay press saying that the uh, magic bullet for this is X, Y, or Z. And uh, typically, we're finding that all of those are not bearing fruit at all. So please be cautious and be wary. Don't uh, start trying to treat yourself for this unless it's at the direction of a physician. Um, another positive note that we've seen over the last week or so is that testing has become more prevalent. Many hospitals are starting to do their own testing. And we're starting to see the advent of some newer tests, which may be helpful not only in identifying people who are currently infected, but may help us identify people who have previously been infected and therefore might be immune from an infection again. We're also seeing some of the um, shortages of personal protective equipment and testing supplies, which have sort of dominated the last several weeks are starting to lessen. The supply chain is starting to catch up. And so the medical uh, community is becoming even more well equipped at this time. And uh, we're starting to see uh, better outcomes. Uh, this is particularly important because most of the models around the country suggest that the peak incidence of this disease and the need for resources, specifically hospital beds, ICU beds, and ventilators will likely occur within the next two to four weeks across most of the country, particularly in those urban areas. Uh, the vaccine is in development. Uh, there's several teams around the world working on it in various stages. I'm not really going to talk uh, at all about how they're doing because uh, until we have a vaccine, any other talk about how close we are is very premature. Uh, the vaccine development stages are multiple, and until a vaccine clears the last one, it's really not ready because it has yet to be proven to be safe or effective. And this vaccine, unlike our seasonal flu vaccine, is going to have to be made from scratch. Our seasonal flu vaccine, we have a good blueprint for how to make that vaccine every year, and then we make adjustments to it based off of the flu and how it has changed. For the coronavirus, uh, for COVID-19, we don't really have that blueprint. So scientists are working from scratch to identify what areas need to be targeted, testing it to see if that targeting is working. And it's sort of, it is a long, uh, laborious process, uh, which they or uh, lots of teams are undertaking right now, uh, but we can't really give you a promise as to when one will be available. Based on previous vaccine work, it will likely take approximately 12 to 18 months. Um, impacts on healthcare systems: What we're seeing, uh, various countries and various jurisdictions, even within a country, are in, very, in different stages of their outbreak outbreak response. Many countries um, are putting all of their resources to addressing the COVID-19 uh, needs, and therefore other needs are being put on the back burner and may not be addressed at this time. This includes non-urgent uh, non care, routine care, and elective procedures. Uh, we're also starting to see that healthcare systems are starting to range in um, how busy they are. Some of them are very quiet uh, with social distancing being effective. Some of those healthcare systems are not very busy at all, but are maintaining their preparedness for when the surge hits. Others are extremely overburdened as we've seen in the news. And the switch from quiet to overwhelmed can often take less than a week. And we are very cautious right now over the next month because we anticipate that is when uh, that change will happen in more and more areas around the country and the world. What does this mean for our globally mobile populations? Um, once again, be aware of what your healthcare system has currently available if they are limiting ser uh, services. It's something you want to know before you go seek care. Um, understand and investigate what your areas processes are for handling COVID-19. Um, 
and understand that if regulations are in place saying that a, someone who is under suspicion cannot leave, uh, as we're seeing in some places, that is the case and we will not be able to, uh, to do very much about that. Um, and then making sure you have the basic necessities for care of yourself, uh, your family and your household available to you, whether it's uh, long-term medications, first aid supplies, or anything you need to treat basic endemic illnesses, whether it's uh, local diarrhea, malaria, uh, coughs and colds, other things like that. Um, we've talked a lot about flattening the curve and social distancing. Uh, this is probably one of the best examples of uh, how this is displayed, uh, displayed graphically. The curve on the left, which peaks early, is what tends to happen in situations of uncontrolled transmission. And you'll notice the dotted horizontal line that goes across is what the healthcare system is able to, uh, to treat and to handle. Anything above that line typically will be people who will not be able to access care when they need it. In the situation of uncontrolled spread on the, uh, the left, you see that there's a lot of people who will not be able to access care. First on the uh, flattened curve, the healthcare system is able to keep up because the cases are spread out over time and very few people are not able to access care. One thing that's important to note here is that under both situations, roughly the same number of people get sick. This, uh, the entire paradigm here is not about uh, necessarily keeping everyone from getting it, but spreading out those cases over time so that the healthcare system is able to keep up. And I, like I mentioned before, most of the evidence suggests that our current efforts are working. Um, and that that curve is coming down and well within what the healthcare system is able to manage. One of the questions I get asked most commonly with this is, well, you know, Dr. Arwenecker, that's great, but then when can we stop doing this? Uh, because we have, it's a lot of restrictions and we wanna get back to our lives. Um, one of the issues with flattening the curve is that the curve will often get longer. We can tell you that the peak will likely occur within the next four weeks, but as you'll notice with this graph, um, I can't necessarily tell you when that graph will go back to normal. Um, the restrictions which are in place are being um, advised by the medical community, but they're ultimately made by our political leaders. And I cannot comment on when they will or will not lift the restrictions. What we have seen in uh, areas around the world is when the effort to remove the restrictions occurs too early, the cases sprout back up again. This happened in China, this happened in Hong Kong. So uh, we anticipate there will be a longer period of these restrictions, but I can't tell you exactly how long that's gonna be. Once again, good news in this situation is that Wuhan um, actually lifted their restrictions today for the first time, and we're gonna see how that goes. We're hopeful that it goes well, since that was the epicenter for where this outbreak started. Uh, and we're gonna be tracking that closely to see what their experience is. Things you can do to protect yourself and your loved ones. Uh, first and foremost, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, or use a alcohol-based hand sanitizer of at least 60% alcohol. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, as that is the primary portal of entry for this virus into, um, into people who could become infected. Wearing a cloth mask when outside, this was a recommendation made by the United States CDC over the last week or so, which was a marked change in their previous um, stance. With how pervasive the virus is now, they are recommending that when you go outside, you wear a cloth mask over your uh, nose and mouth to prevent transmission. I wanna be very clear here that the recommendation is made to protect other people, meaning that you wear the mask as a protection against you accidentally spreading it to another person based on if you are an asymptomatic uh, patient. The mask itself provides very little protection to you, but if, uh, it maintain, if everyone wears one, it keeps those clouds of virus particles, of those uh, clouds of droplets from uh, becoming large, 
and prevents other people from being exposed to it. Um, avoiding close contact with people who are sick, staying at least six feet away, uh, two meters, cleaning and disinfecting frequently touched surfaces, including phones and computers, countertops, desktops, uh, doorknobs, staying at home when you're sick, and foregoing non-essential travel. Um, if you believe you may have symptoms, a few things that you should keep in mind. First and foremost, don't panic. As we know, 80% of people have minimal to no symptoms. Avoid public places, including public transportation. Self-quarantine at home, which means uh, stay away from other people who could potentially become infected by this. Um, uh, use a separate bathroom. Avoid uh, people who are older particularly at over the age of 60 and may be at risk. And if you have mild symptoms, use telemedicine to access health care. You'll be assessed if you need to go in for additional care. And then contact your country's local health authorities for testing guidance. If you have severe symptoms, go to an emergency department. At this point, I'm going to hand it over to Ben uh, to discuss more about resources that are available. Yep, excellent. Thank you so much. So one of the things that we have seen as, as this pandemic has developed is certainly a, a huge amount of focus and information coming out from many, many different channels. Anyone who tunes on the news uh, is, is likely to encounter stories and reporting on what is going on uh, in the U.S. Or, or wherever they may be around the world. There's tons of information on the Internet, and we just would like to point out that when you are seeking your information related to COVID, we would really recommend that you look at the sources of that information. And we have seen quite a bit of either misleading and or just plain false information circulating around uh, around the, the uh, pandemic itself, effective treatments, what you can do. So we really recommend any kind of questions you have when you're seeking information, use reliable sources. We have been gathering all of our information from uh, the sources that you see here. So the World Health Organization, the US CDC, in terms of getting the latest figures on the spread and, and numbers of cases, Johns Hopkins Center for uh, System Science and Engineering has uh, an excellent tracker and a map. That's where we got the numbers from the first set of, uh, of numbers that you saw. And then for any kind of travel restrictions and or travel, um, uh, bans in place. IATA Travel Center is an excellent place where they've really collected all of the latest information around travel restrictions where you can and can't fly if you are able to access those locations and travel to them, what kind of procedures they may have in, in place for, for you to be aware of. So again, uh, although most people are, are, are not traveling a lot, if you do have essential travel, and, and need to get information, the IATA Travel Center has really done a great job of tracking all of the different uh, restrictions that have been put in place, and you can figure out how feasible that trip may, may be. So just to call out there, these are excellent sources. This is where we would recommend anyone getting uh, information on, on COVID to go. We also wanted to spend a little bit of time, as we've been talking lately over the last couple of weeks, around some of the support that, that we're finding that people need and something that's getting a little bit more attention but still has been largely lost in the overall reporting and, uh, and information coming out about COVID. And that's really around the stress and, and the psychological effects that all of not only the pandemic itself but the measures that have been put in place to, to slow the spread. So the social isolation, social distancing, stay at home orders. and. We just really want to make sure that everyone understands that, that, that these things alone can also have a pretty profound effect on people, and we are beginning to see some of that. So people are, are not used to having their lives completely upended, and there is some uncertainty around how long all of this will take and when things can start to go back to normal. So just, just to call out that that is something that should not be lost. It can create intense feelings, shock, overwhelmed, um, physical stress like headaches, dizziness, and nausea, and it can have an effect on people's sleeping and, and eating patterns. So a couple things that can be done here and is an excellent opportunity for any employers out there to reinforce some of the resources that are available, as well as 
creating an environment that employees understand and know that they do have resources for them. So making sure that they can ask for help, that they understand there are resources for them to be able to talk through their feelings, identify any support where they, where they, they may need it, and then make sure that uh, those resources are well understood. So things like the employee assistance program, we have seen uh, a pretty dramatic uptick in the utilization of those sorts of programs. They can all be done telephonically. Uh, most of them are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So it is an excellent opportunity, even if you're not able to uh, to leave your house and, and go see someone in person, to use those sorts of resources to talk through any kind of feelings and or anxiety and stress that, that may be um, maybe building in people because of either fear of catching COVID themselves or simply the, uh, the stress and anxiety around having to upend their lives. As well as many people are now being asked to not only do their full-time jobs, but do them from home, as well as making sure that their children are, are getting their, their distance learning done. And so people are, are essentially split between a full-time employee and a full-time teacher and a full-time parent, which uh, again is a lot for people to have to go through at one time. So having the flexibility and really understanding what, that, uh, what the impact of, of that can do is really, really important. So just wanted to make sure that that was called out here. And then also there are a couple of resources that we offer. Uh, which I can go over here. And, and so again, information, we do recommend that uh, you go check out those links. We also do have information available on our website and, uh, and, and app, so myuhc.com and Health for Me. There are a number of things that you can do there as well as get, get updated information. I mentioned the Employee Assistance Program. Again, very good resource for anyone who needs to talk through any of their feelings or just needs someone to talk about what's going on. It can also be a resource for any uh, managers and or leaders within organizations that are trying to cope with all of the questions that their employees have and any, any kind of increased pressure that they may be under. Our Intelligence Center is still available as well. We are pushing out alerts on a regular basis as to what is going on around the world, both medical and uh, non-medical alerts, such as new travel restrictions and or the lifting of travel restrictions, uh, what has been the impact to specific countries and where we are seeing things. And then also, uh, it, it, it is, uh, again, get, being a little lost, but there are other things that are still going on, uh, security concerns, uh, other sorts of, of things that may impact anyone in a particular location that is not COVID related. So we continue to push all of that information out as well. My Wellbeing is a program that, that helps people uh, maintain healthy lifestyles. That's another important thing that we've seen, being able to get yourself in, in a, a good frame of mind, continue to do the exercise that you can, and make sure that, that you have all of, those, uh, all of those resources available to you. And then finally, did want to talk about virtual visits. So virtual visits is something that has gotten a fair amount of, of, uh, of, of talk and press lately. Virtual visits and telemedicine, we really put those in the same bucket, but that allows you to be able to still see a physician and, and get treated without having to actually go physically into an office. So again, we've seen a big utilization. It's an excellent resource, especially if you have uh, something minor and would just like uh, the doctor's opinion and, uh, and are not necessarily in a position to be able to go see your, your practitioner. So these, uh, these services have been and seen a huge utilization increase uh, over the last several weeks for, for obvious reasons. And I, I believe that we're starting to see that uh, many providers who, who even did not previously provide these services could be your, uh, your general practitioner, your primary care physician, your pediatrician, are now beginning to do some of their visits on either on a virtual chat, uh, virtual video, or just via telephonically. So uh, it's always a good idea if you do need to see a, a, a doctor to give them a call see what their protocols are in this particular time. And of, of course, if you are having a medical emergency, get yourself to the emergency room, call 911 right away. But if it is something that is not urgent, we, we certainly would like to, to mention that there are a lot of options now to either be seen telephonically or via video. And, uh, and those have been working quite well for folks. So with that, we did just about what we said we were going to do, and we're going to leave a little bit actually more than, than 30 minutes for questions. So 
Uh, again, we did want to change up the format. We have been doing these uh, each week and, and providing updates. So uh, wanted to make sure that we were able to provide the most relevant updates to you, but also leave a bit more time for questions. As we've done these in the past, we haven't necessarily been able to get to everyone's questions, have been trying to follow up with people if we weren't able to address them, um, but wanted to leave some more time. So at this point, we're going to open it up to questions. You can uh, type in a question if you have a question via our chat feature, or I believe, Aaron, we are going to unmute everyone's line and allow them to just ask any questions that they may have um, directly to either myself or Dr. Arwen Decker. Excellent. Again, everyone, if you have a question, you can certainly type it into the chat. At this time, we will unmute um, everyone on the call. And that will allow anyone to ask anyone to ask questions. Yeah. 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 I went fishing, and he was just like, we just aren't taking this serious enough. Correct. Then we do have a question in the chat, and it is asking a good question, which is how do we as brokers get access or log in for UHC.com? I'm only able to access the public information, and it doesn't include UHC's COVID updates. Do we have an answer for that particular question? Thank you. We do. So, uh, some actual brokerage firms yeah. can, be, can be registered for myuhc.com, uh, I would have them reach out to their either account, the, the account manager that they work with on a regular basis or any of our sales folks across the country, and, and we would be able to set you up with, uh, with a login information to myuhc.com. And again, we do have a, a broker section within our, our uh, website to be able to access all of that information. If you don't know who your account rep is, um, feel free to just either reach out to me personally and I'd be happy to, uh, to figure out who your rep is. Um, and again, we can do this either via our global teams or our domestic teams. So either one would work. Okay, so there was a lot of background noise uh, as I think all of you, all of you heard. So, what we're going to do instead is, again, either type in your question in the chat if you have one, or you can also raise your hand, uh, and then we can, we, can, we can do it that way. So if there are any other questions, please enter them into the chat or just go ahead and, and raise your hand. We'll give everyone a minute. You might be typing, and if there are no questions, then you'll get some time back. All right, well, I'm not seeing anyone raise their hand or any other questions coming in to the chat. So um, that's totally fine. We really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to join today. If you do have any feedback on these webinars or any other webinars that we do, always welcome your feedback. We do try to bring relevant information out on a regular basis. Recently, there has been a lot of demand for information related specifically to COVID, and that's why we set this webinar series up. Uh, we will continue to do them as long as people find them valuable and, and interesting. If, uh, if you have any suggestions for us for other topics you'd like to hear, uh, please let us know. Again, we're happy and, and do uh, try to do this for the benefit of all of our brokers, all of our members, and our clients. So want to make sure that we continue to, uh, to bring that information to you. 
we will be conducting a, a couple more of these each Wednesday. So we will continue to bring the latest updates uh, out to our, our, our partners and clients. And uh, again, thank you all very much for joining today. We appreciate it and can't wait to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.